The Prime Minister isn't committing to fund what he says is a key Queensland infrastructure priority. With both federal leaders in Brisbane today, attention's been focused on what they're promising for Queensland. Labor has pledged to fund the M1 expansion, but so far the coalition won't say if it will match the commitment. George Roberts reports. In unofficial campaign mode, Good evening, everybody. the opposition leader has begun the battle for South East Queensland votes. But I want to start off with a couple of promises. One of those is $168 million to improve traffic flow on the M1. We will help unlock the gridlock, which is the southbound lanes of the road which gets you between Gold Coast, Logan and Brisbane. That's a promise. Yeah. Yeah. The Prime Minister's into building projects too. Women in construction is a great uh, venture, a great initiative. Promoting building jobs for women south of Brisbane, Malcolm Turnbull took on the job of asking as well as answering the questions. What do you say about the opportunities in the construction and building industry? I would definitely say don't be afraid, don't let the men intimidate you. Um, confidence is the key and come in and get your hands dirty. But on money for two more southbound lanes at the Gateway Merge, the Prime Minister's not letting slip the Coalition's intentions. It's very high on the Infrastructure Australia priority list. It's being looked at very carefully and we'll have more to say about it in the weeks ahead. With the federal budget less than a week away and conscious there are seats up for grabs in Queensland, the state government's demanding federal funding for a host of projects, including the Ipswich motorway upgrade and a new stadium for Townsville, as well as billions of dollars for health and education. George Roberts, ABC News, Brisbane. Also, while in Brisbane, the federal opposition revealed its climate change plan that would see polluters paying at most a few cents for every tonne of carbon they emit. Under Labor's proposal, there would be two separate emissions trading schemes, one for electricity generators and another for big emitters. Labor also wants to introduce mandatory light vehicle standards, which it says will save drivers thousands of dollars in fuel over the life of a car, but add $1,500 to the price of a new car in 2025. Labor denies the policy is a new tax. There will be no carbon tax under Labor. There will be no fixed price under Labor. What Labor's proposing to do is unilaterally nearly double the commitment that we're making without any commitments from other countries. The government says the policy will increase electricity prices.